Buenos nachos and welcome back to the channel. So on today's episode, we're going to be installing the retro gem into this old PlayStation console and we're going to bring it into the digital age, which means, which means it'll have an HDMI port and it'll work with modern TVs. Without further ado, let's begin. And for those of you that are not aware, this is what the retro gem looks like. It's from Pixel FX. There's our guy. And you got a bunch of jumpers you can set. Definitely looks to be quite high quality, if I may say so myself. We have removed the it's not really a main board, but we removed the PCB from the console shell and we've already made it through all of the other prepping. According to the instructions for Pixel FX for this retro gem, I don't know if you can tell, but we've already pre-capped this entire board and of course now we're going to have to undo some of our work, but what can you do? First thing they want you to do is to remove the serial port and then after that we'll need to remove some capacitors and replace them with some tantalum capacitors. All right so we'll begin by removing the serial port and that means we unfortunately have to turn on this noisy beast over here once again. As for temperature, probably the max. Now this is a leaded baseboard so obviously you don't need to go that high. I'll do 400 just because I want to get past this quickly. And I'm just pushing on this port with very little force to see when the solder becomes liquidous. And once it has, which it looks like it might have, I can then pull this thing out like a tooth. Insert tooth popping sound. And there we are. Came out like nothing. Now you want to just leave the board alone for a couple of seconds. That way the solder gets, it solidifies. That way nothing flies off. So we have removed the serial port and now it is time to remove these capacitors. Now which ones do we need to remove exactly? Well, according to the Guido, also known as a guide, we need to remove this one, this one, this one, this one, and I believe that to be all. <sighs> I wish I hadn't just installed these. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and try and do this the safe way. I find it's easiest to just lift up one side at a time just because these are new capacitors and I don't want them to go to waste. And then that's, uh, that is perfectly salvaged. We have our good legs. Now to do that three more times, which we'll skip ahead for you guys. Now we're gonna replace them with the recommended ones from Pixel FX that are a part of the kit. We'll first begin by installing the smallest capacitor right here at the bottom. All right, I think that's tacked on quite well. You noted the orientation, that's how you want to have it. And these other uh, tantalum capacitors, the orientation will be as follows. Tweezers might have flux on them and that's why I took it with it. Guess it's time for some more solder. And now to do that two more times and then we can move on to the next step. Next on the list is installing the flex cables. The first flex that we'll be installing goes to the controller port right over here, connection 102. And it goes in there like so. You'll want to get that as aligned as best as possible. I'm going to add some flux. And I actually ended up being some this time instead of a boatload, if you've seen the previous videos. And I guess maybe I have some flux on my glove because it took the flex with it. Now this has to be aligned again. Damn it. Just gonna add a little bit of solder to my soldering iron tip. That way I can tack this down real quick. All right, and you'll wanna have it like so, and then you just tack it down when it doesn't move on you, of course. And the same thing with that side. All right, now we'll go ahead and get the top. But first, let me go ahead and add some flux. Now that top one went pretty smoothly. We'll of course go over it again to make sure that it was soldered on properly. Because as you can clearly tell, this bottom one doesn't look like it's having the greatest of times. And I want these solder joints to be perfect. And 
and I think I will adjust the camera just for you people at home. Fiber had to be from the previous time that I worked on this board when I replaced all the capacitors. How about those solder joints look pretty good. This one over here, I don't know why it looks that way, but we'll go over it once more. Probably just needs a little bit of soldering. Yeah, that was probably a cold solder joint. It still is. There we go. Yeah, it looks like that'll live up to my standards. We'll clean that up after we're done with all the other flexes. Next is the audio flex. Hopefully this flex is a little bit better than the one that came with the PS1 digital because I did not like that one. And I'm sure a lot of other people in this installation scene will probably agree. Past I've had to manually wire it just because of how bad it was. I think we'll swap out to a better tip. I don't understand why there couldn't have been a cutout for that as well. All right, we've changed our view. That way you can get a better look at the soldering work here. And you're just gonna tack these one at a time. I probably should be using the non-leaded solder, but I'm using leaded solder today. So we're definitely not ROHS compliant. We'll of course clear up these bridges once we're at the very end. I just want to make sure we have a good solder joint here before we move on. There we go. Probably going to need a little bit of flux for this very end part. And we do have additional solder that will need to be removed, so I'm going to use the desoldering wick on it. Probably removed it a little too much, but we'll see. Yeah, just a tad. All right, let's go ahead and clean that up because I don't want to come back to this section. I didn't clean the other, uh, the controller port area, but that's fine. Just want to make sure that this is in good condition before we move on. But as you can tell, that looks pretty good. So now we're going to move on to the other flexes. Next, we're going to remove the resistor. That way we can use the clock. It is auto-generated by the Retro Gem as they give you that option. I just flooded it with solder and removed it. Next, we'll go ahead and clean up this area just a tad before we install our flex cable. We'll blow the hell out of it. We'll go ahead and add some flux. All right, and now, of course, we're installing our most difficult part, which is this flex cable for the GPU. We'll start by tacking down this corner over here. It is advised that you do not do drag soldering here, so I'm kind of doing like a uh, circular 
pattern of sorts. All right, looks like we have a good joint there. All right, so we have our ROHS compliant solder here. And we'll just start off from this side. And you're basically gonna be doing tack soldering as I am doing now. And you kinda wanna have a ridge on each one of these solder joints. And you just keep going. We just finished the GPU flex installation and I finished cleaning it up as well. We'll go ahead and clean up the rest of the flexes and then we'll install this. We've just finished the cleaning of the board to remove all the excess flux. And we have also assembled our retro gem. So we put the plastic pieces on and installed the ribbons. We've also soldered this on there, so the lug. We'll go ahead and screw that down and attach the controller flex and the audio flex to it. All right, so we finished installing the ribbons here or the flex cables and installed those into the board. This one looks a little offset, so we'll do a little of a, an adjustment to it. Now, since we did the clock mod, we're gonna go ahead and add some solder to the solder points for the clock mod. The one under here. And next will be K. It's a lot of solder. You just want to tuck everything away. Uh, one other solder point that you want to take care of is the clock point over here. And this is not a PAL console, so we're not touching the PAL point over here. We just finished the installation. Now let's go ahead and see how this is working on our modern TV. It's looking pretty good. And there you have it. We were able to bring up the Pixel FX Retro Gem menu. Until next time.